Hey, this is Joe from Personas, and today I'm going to share with you a couple of different tools that I use to do pre-production inside of Studio One. First question, obviously, what is pre-production? It's everything that happens before production begins, and I would say production is anything that happens before mixing. Okay, so recording, uh, any sort of MIDI programming, uh, editing, tuning, anything that happens in the song to get it ready for mixing, I would call that, I would file that under the umbrella of production. And then pre-production is the stuff that I do to get ready for production. So for me, a lot of times I'm recording a band. You may have noticed behind me, there's a drum kit over there, there's a bass rig over there. This past weekend, we did pre-production, my band, me, Tim, and Joel, did pre-production for an upcoming EP. That means we weren't planning to like record anything as like actual tracks, but we wanted to get ready for the tracking session that's coming next weekend. And the idea was to come in, set up a couple of mics on the drum kit, run my guitar and bass into Studio One, and just make sure that we have the songs like we want them to be before we do the proper tracking, if that makes sense. You may be wondering, hey, what's the point? The point is, this is where we decide things like, what tempo are the songs going to be at? What's the general vibe of the song? Uh, the main goal of this pre-production day for me was to walk away with a chart knowing exactly how the song was going to go. Because when we come in for tracking day, once we get sounds, we're going to hit record and just plow through this chart because we know exactly what we're playing, when we're playing it, and exactly how long the song is, exactly how long this chorus is, and things like that. So that was the overall goal for the pre-production session. Uh, but there are a few tools that I used in Studio One that made it a really easy and fun process. So I want to show those to you now. So here is our pre-production day. We did four songs. We got a few more we might do, but these are what we were able to knock out. And you'll notice I put everything in one song inside of Studio One. I could have done this on separate songs, and that was actually my original intention. Um, but once we got rolling, it was just easier to just continue to record down the timeline to the right. So let me dive into three different tools that I used that really made this process really fun. So the first is the tempo track. If you didn't know, this little button up here, when you first open Studio One, you may not, you may not see things like markers, uh, or anything up here underneath the timeline right here. But if you click on this, there are actually a lot of extra things, horizontal kind of marker thingamajigs that go across the top. One is markers, we'll talk about that in a second, but the other is a tempo track. So you can set the tempo for your song down here. If you're just recording one song and you need to set the tempo, you just click here, type the tempo in, or you can actually tap on the word tempo to tap in the tempo. Um, but if you're doing something like this, either a song where the tempo changes from one section to the next, or you're doing something like I'm doing, kind of pre-production, and we're going to do, you know, each song is at a different tempo, the tempo track is really, really handy. So for the first song, we just set the tempo, 143, it just, it just one, two, three, four, and go. Um, but then we got to the second song, which is a lot more chill and is a lot slower. So all I had to do here was change the tempo on the tempo track so that once we get to this section in the song, the tempo is 110. Earlier, it was 143. Now, how does the tempo track work? It works a lot like automation works in Studio One. Let's go down here to the end. Let's say I'm ready to start on the next song. First thing I do is click there to just create a new edit point. Now, if I click and drag afterward, I can change the tempo as low as 110, as high as 155. And we can go lower as well by just double tapping or getting into this section and then typing in the amount. Let's say we want to go down to 87, which is like the tempo that I write everything at, apparently. Um, but we've worked, we've gotten better. These are all faster. But that can be our tempo for this song. And then we record it. We're happy with that. We move on to the next one. And I say, okay, this one needs to be closer to like 140. And we can drag it right to 140. I got lucky there. Um, or we can get into this section and I can just type it in 141 and it will change that, just that section. Everything else stays the same. So it's a lot like automation in that regard. We can have different sections of our song be different tempos. And this is great for what we did because every song was at a slightly different tempo. This was 143, this was 140. Um, but one of the cool things that having a tempo track let us do is I can look through here and I can kind of see the history, the timeline of what we did. So the first song we decided one, what was it? 130 was the tempo and we said great and we recorded it. The second song we recorded it at 110 and then afterward we said, you know what, that feels a little slow so we tried it again at 112. 
and I kept both, and I can see, okay, here's the 110, here's where I changed it to 112, and that's probably what we decided on. And to me, that's just interesting. We can say, like, if we get back next week and say, okay, 112, does that feel right? And we could say, does it feel fast? And we can look back and say, oh, no, no, we tried it at 110, and we decided that was too slow, so we went to 112. By the way, a couple of, D, couple of DB, a couple of BPM difference actually can make a huge difference when you're working on stuff. It doesn't have to be we tried it at 110 and then we tried it again at 120. Sometimes going from 110 to 112, you can find that sweet spot that feels just like the right tempo. Okay, and then we moved on to this song and we kept the tempo the same. Actually, no, we changed it by one. So this one, we, we recorded at 127, felt okay. Everybody, it felt like we were pushing the tempo a little bit, so we did it again at 128. And we can see it's 128 here. You can also see it there. It's just such a small change. You're not going to see it show up here. Um, but you can always check here. That shows the current tempo of where the playhead is. And then down here as well. You have it in both spots. And then the final song was at 140. And we recorded that at once. And that worked out well. So the tempo track is super valuable. This is the primary way that I use the tempo track. I don't have a lot of songs that vary the tempo within the song. If I did, I would obviously use the tempo track more, uh, but that's a great tool for doing pre-production. The second tool, I've already talked about this briefly, is markers. Um, as you can see, I need to know where the songs are without having to listen to it every time. And I put the title of the songs in these markers. So I can quickly go find the one I'm looking for. And then I can see, okay, there were two recordings under Can't Not Let Go, double negative. My English teacher's probably sl for slapping her forehead right now. But um, we know this last one was the, the most updated one, the one that I want to use. Another thing about markers that you probably know, but maybe you don't, is included in the marker track, which by the way, you can show using the same little tab here. Um, included in the marker track are these start and end markers. These are really handy because this tells me when I'm going to do something like export the mix down, which I need to do today to send these to Tim and Joel so we can all be listening to them before the recording session. Um, I export mix down. One of the options for the range is to export between the song start and end marker. That's how I can export four songs from one song file. So I can come here, I can select the area for the song, let's say this was the length of the song, and then I can press Command Y, and you'll notice the start and end markers jumped to that selection that I have. So now I can do my export of this song, get that done, say great, then I can come in here and say alright now I need to export this one, and I can select that and go option Y, start and end, jump to there, uh, and continue that down the process. Now, would this be a little bit easier? Is that a clunky way to go about it? Kind of, but for me, saving the time of using one song for this whole process, because really, we're not going to use much of this in the final version. This was just helping us kind of figure things out. Um, but the, the, the time saved to me is worth it to just come in and say, okay, here's this song, let's export that. It's not that hard to do that. Okay, the third tool I want to tell you about is the arranger track. So that's another one that we can pull in by using this menu up here. And the goal for this session, like I said, was for us to have a chart, to know where the song's going and to have a general idea of the vibe, make sure we have the tempo and the chart. So that was the goal of the session. So I wasn't gonna come in here and map every section out on the arranger track. That's really not what I was trying to do, that would be it would take too much time and we were just we were all had we all had pads and pencils and we were writing things down but after we recorded this song uh, bass player Joel said hey we we talked about making this intro a lot longer but when we actually recorded it we didn't play it that long so the options are go back and re-record it um, come in here and cut and paste and move things around or the secret third option is use this intro these um, arranger track sections so I found the section here and we realized we wanted to repeat this a few more times. So all I had to do was, let's delete these and I'll show you exactly what I do. All I had to do was create an arranger track for this four bar section here, okay? And then if I wanna repeat this, all I have to do is just press D on my keyboard and it repeats this section. And you'll notice, what's it doing? It's repeating everything inside that section. So if I decided that intro needs to be a few minutes or hours long, I can just repeat that out. And I can do the same for each section. So I came in here and found the section that we wanted to make longer and just repeated it out. Now, is that gonna sound perfect? Probably not, but for our purposes of kind of mapping out the song and getting it laid out the way we need it to be, super, super handy. This is also helpful if you decide, you know what, I don't know if this section needs to be this long or if 
this needs to come after this section. You can start to move things around and rearrange the song after you record it. Um, and that can help you just to just to test out ideas and see, okay, does it sound better if we flip the chorus with the verse and things like that? The arranger track is super handy for that. That's what I use it more for um, than using it once we actually get into the production. I find myself not using the arranger track as much, but doing this, testing out ideas and rearranging things, it is priceless. Um, if you've ever had to do this process where you take every section here and you have to copy it and then you have to take everything to the right of it and you have to like, it's it's... I, if you've never done it, it's an annoying process. You have to take all of this and you have to move it down. Then you paste this over. It's it's annoying. The arranger track makes it to where you never have to do that again. And I love that about it. Okay, one final tool, and this is um this is it's honestly it's super simple, but a lot of people don't realize you can do this. When the boys come in to record on Saturday, we're gonna say, hey, this loop that we recorded on the drums, this really cool kind of simple loop he recorded with a really really high snare drum sound we want to use that as like a loop that we then track to um, and he's gonna play like a big kit over the top of that well we want that in the new song there's a couple ways we can do that but honestly the simple simplest way is we copy and then I come out of this song completely open up our new song Let's assume this is our new song and this is my, these are my two drum tracks here, okay? So I've created my full on like preset and everything else. I can just go boom, paste. Actually, I don't even think I needed the tracks. Let's delete those and just hit paste. Yeah, it pastes the entire thing, meaning the name of the tracks and the actual audio itself into this session. That's it. I copied from one and pasted it to the other. We know we can do that in like a document. I can copy the text from one document and paste it in the other. What we don't realize sometimes is we can copy actual audio events and paste them somewhere else. And since Studio One, unlike some other DAWs, allows you to have multiple songs open at the same time, you can do this as much as you want. You just click on this little drop down, go back to the song you're working on, press paste. Okay, that was the wrong spot. Press paste, and there it is. Okay, so that one, it pasted it onto the existing selected track. If I deselect this track and hit paste, okay. Well, okay, so it pastes it. If there's no tracks, it'll paste it by itself. If there are tracks, it'll paste it in an existing track. Either way, you can see it's very cool and very simple to take things from one song to the next, which is another reason why I didn't really worry about not having all of my eggs in a in a row. That's not right. All my eggs in the same basket. I can't remember the expression. I didn't worry about having this pre-production session having everything I wanted in it. Just a blank session we recorded too. Then I can take these tracks if I want to keep them or reference them in the final version. I can set up my template with all the audio inputs and outputs for tracking the drums and the reverbs and the sends and all of that stuff. And then whatever tracks I need, I can just open this up, copy those, paste them in, and we can go. So, if you've never done pre-production like this before, I encourage you to try it. The real point of this video wasn't so much to say, hey, this is how you should do pre-production, or even you should do pre-production at all, but more so to re just to give you another example of how Studio One is just a giant toolbox. And here are four tools that I used to accomplish a specific task, which is set up, get the pre-production done for an upcoming project. Um, you may f sometimes feel like a little bit of overwhelm, that there's so many things in Studio One, so many tools available, you feel like you have to use them all. You don't have to use them all. Find a handful that serve you well, that do some things that you need to get done, and just use those. And then if you have another thing that you want to do, you're like, I wish Studio One did this. Fun fact, it probably does. I have found that Still, I've been using Studio One for a decade. I still find features where I say, hey, Gregor, I wish Studio One did this. That'd be so cool. And it'll say, it actually does. Here's how. So it is a deep software. But don't let that overwhelm you. If you want to keep it simple with a handful of tools and you use those to your heart's content, great. But just know that if you want to go deeper, there are deeper capabilities under the hood that you can access but you don't have to know all of them to start making great music and getting good results right now, today. By the way, if you didn't know, if you've never used Studio One and you're watching this video thinking, well, I think I want to give it a shot, head over to our website and search for Studio One and you can try Studio One Professional, the full version that you're seeing in front of you here, for free for 30 days. Check that out. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe. See you in the next one.